long-running public inquiry into the contaminated blood scandal of the 1970s and 80s has been hearing its closing arguments. It's now believed that around 30,000 people were infected with HIV or hepatitis C after receiving blood transfusions or taking a drug imported from the US to control haemophilia. The inquiry has taken evidence from 370 witnesses. Its recommendations are expected later this year. Well, our uh, health reporter Jim Reed is here. So, the end of an incredibly um, harrowing and difficult process for the victims of all of this, um, but it's nearing some kind of resolution. That's right, and this goes back many years to the 1970s and 1980s. There were two main groups of, of people affected and infected. So one were people with blood disorders, most noticeably haemophilia, which stops your, your blood clotting properly. They were given a, a new type of medication in the late 70s called Factor VIII. Um, we later found out that that was often being imported from the United States, where it was being made using blood donated by very at-risk groups, including prisoners. As a result of that, we know now that more than 1,300 people contracted HIV. Many of those people were children. Then there was a second group of people infected, and these were people who had blood transfusions through that time. So that might have been after childbirth, through an operation. And again, through this inquiry, we now know that more than 25,000 people are thought to have been infected with mainly hepatitis C as a result of that and we think over 2,000 of that group probably lost their lives. So as we said, as we said before Clive this is a, a disaster really on, on a huge scale for the NHS but because it took place over many many years mm. and because it took so long for people to realise that they've been infected and then in some cases to get very sick and lose their lives maybe it hasn't got the, the attention that other scandals like it have had which is one reason why you've had this public inquiry which is as you say is wrapped up today. Yeah, um, it's been described as a scandal. Does that mean anyone's going to be prosecuted? Well, it's interesting. So we just had the actual final comments from the judge, Sir Brian Langstaff, who's been chairing this inquiry. So now essentially that the hearing part of the inquiry is over. He made some interesting points. One thing he said was we were expecting a final report with recommendations from the inquiry in the summer. It looks like that's now being put back to at least the autumn. And one reason he, he talked about needing extra time was because if someone is criticised, officially criticised by the inquiry, it's called the maximisation process, they have to be given notice so they can respond. And he made it clear in this final statement that people would be criticised, which I think many victims and many families of the people who've lost their lives will, will be thankful, thankful to hear. So we've got that process. And as we've said before, various um, witnesses in this whole process that have talked about what other action could be taken, most notably Andy Burnham, now the, the Mayor of Manchester, of course, but was a, a former Labour Health Secretary. And when he gave evidence, he talked about maybe corporate manslaughter charges being necessary in the future. So certainly, even though this part of the inquiry is over, I don't think you've seen the last of the people and organisations really being potentially brought to account. Yeah. And you have covered this story for quite a while now and followed all the proceedings. What has it been like for the victims, for the people who are in there, finally having their day in court, as it were? I think it's been hugely significant, actually, for, for the victims. I, I think one major criticism that's been made is that they haven't had an opportunity to put their side of the story and explain what has happened. And that's one thing that this public inquiry has allowed them to do. So, you know, looking at some of the statistics, they've taken witness, like live witnessed um, hearings from 370 people over the last five years. Many of those are people who have been infected or whose relatives have been infected. It was one whole week that I sat through, which was all about a school in Hampshire, a state-run boarding school called Trelaws, where a number of young haemophiliac pupils went. And we know now, because of this inquiry, that 72 pupils at that school later went on and lost their lives. Over the course of this inquiry, we found out that 380 children were affected with HIV. I think hearing the testimony of some of the parents and some of the families of those children has been particularly powerful. Yeah, and very sobering too. Jim, thank you. Jim Reed.